Hello, my good folks. Today, I will be explaining what capital gains and their affiliated taxes truly are. I will explain the concepts and cover the details, but as always, keeping it simple and easy to understand. This is another installment in the Beginner's Guide to Investing. Check this series out for other great beginner level videos just like this. I will link it here and below. Without any further ado, let's hit it. Just before we jump into it, just remember that I am not licensed in any capacity and this is just my opinion. Thank you. To keep this concept framed nicely in our minds, let's use a fictitious Robin Hood portfolio as an example. Let's say your grandma, your Mimi, your great ma sends you 500 bucks to invest into your future. You hop on the app store, download the Robin Hood app and sign in for the first time. You jump online, you watch a couple of videos about beginner investing strategy and you decide to invest all 500 into Vanguard's VTI. If you want further explanation on exactly what that is, check out the video up top. So all 500 bucks is sitting in this account and you write your grandma a quick thank you note because you, my friend, know how to treat a grandmother. You do not touch that $500 again for one year. After that one year has elapsed, your initial investment of $500 has transformed into approximately $550. Now let's break down that $550. Your principal, which is the money you initially initially invested is the 500. When you subtract out the principal from your total, you are left with $50. This $50 is known as a capital gain. Capital gains are the money your money makes for you. Simply put, they are the income or salary that your dollar bills make after working very, very hard. Now that we have gotten all of that squared away, let's jump into what this video is actually about, which is addressing the taxes you have to pay on those capital gains. Essentially, when you're talking capital gains taxes, you have two different categories. You have short-term capital gains and you have long-term capital gains. Each of these categories is taxed at different rates. Let's start with category number one, short-term capital gains. Now, what the jumping ice cubes makes a capital gain short-term? Now, that is an excellent question, my young Padawan. The answer is any stock, ETF, or other security bought and sold for a profit within one year is classified as a short-term capital gain. Let's take your grandma's gift example and apply it in this scenario. You still get the 500 bucks from your grandma. You still invest the entirety of it into VTI on your Robinhood app. However, after six months, you've made 25 bucks and you decide that you've had enough of this whole investing thing. You decide to sell all of your shares of VTI. That $25 that you earned over that six month period is your capital gain. Because you sold those shares within in a year, this falls under short-term capital gain territory. Short-term capital gains are taxed at your current income tax bracket because they are in fact income. It's not income you earn from working your day job. It's income your money has made for you. This whole structure changes, however, when you hold your investments for longer than one year. This puts your investments into category two, long-term capital gains. Long-term capital gains, unlike income tax levels, have only three tax brackets. Quick side note, capital gains tax rates tend to shift around under each presidential administration. The dollar amount I'm about to pitch at you is only relevant to our current political climate. If you make between $0 and $39,375 per year, you actually have the awesome advantage of paying 0% on your capital gains. The second tax bracket includes anyone who makes $39,376 dollars per year all the way up to four hundred and thirty four thousand five hundred and fifty dollars per year anyone falling within this level of income pays 15 percent taxes on their long-term capital gains the final bracket is anyone making four hundred and thirty four thousand five hundred and fifty one dollars or more per year these folks will pay 20 percent on their long-term capital gains how do you know how much you will owe in capital gains per year another fantastic question typically in my experience, the brokerage with which you have your money invested will send you a tax document at the end of the year with your declared amount of capital gains. This amount is entered on your standard income tax filings and you settle up with old Uncle Sam at that time. Perfect! So to recap, a capital gain is the money your money has made for you. A capital gains tax is the amount
amount of tax you will have to pay on that income. There are two categories of capital gains taxes, short-term and long-term. Short-term is for investments held less than a year, and long-term is for investments held more than a year. Want to avoid paying all capital gains taxes? Me freaking too. Next week, I will be talking about what is, in my opinion, the best first investment anyone can make. The best advantage to it is that it is 100% exempt from capital gains taxes. If this sounds appealing to you, then stay tuned. Or better yet, smash that subscribe button and hit the little bell icon next to it and you will be notified exactly when that video goes live. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please hit the thumbs up button on your way out. It helps the video get seen by more people. This is again another installment in the beginner's guide to investing. I post videos just like this every single week. I'm Johnny Strobelakos, this is Hell Yeah Money, and I hope you have a peaceful rest of your day.